My name is Martine Sims, and I'm an artist based in Los Angeles. I also grew up here, which is a rarity. Freeze is coming to LA, and it's going to be on the Paramount lot. And most people, part of their experience of the fair will be their experience of getting to the fair by car, most likely. So the culture of driving here, it dramatically affects like the way people relate to each other and your sense of self, you know, the way you understand yourself, because you spend hours in a car, in a metal box, by yourself. My work is mostly about making films, which is sort of a capturing of movement primarily. In addition to like making videos and having these video installations, it's kind of looking at film, television, media, and what it does to us. I move around a lot, and it, it makes me think about how our environments and these kind of infrastructures uh, influence us, and, and how they are a way of creating culture. It's like a, a it, it's like a conditioning. So there's a parallel I see between the way that I navigate the city and my kind of understanding. I'm basically like moving through space and a kind of time, there's like a narrative or there's something sort of unfolding all day. But at the same time, there's all these kind of social and economic and political realities that can be discovered through that. Like the reason that LA is so car dependent didn't just happen, it was a concerted effort. On NTS Radio, cruise around Los Angeles with Martine Sims. Talking cars, driving, routing, Car Talk LA. Hello everybody, I'm driving down Arden. This is Martine on Car Talk LA. I'm here with artist and basketball player, Lauren Halsey. Hey, hey, hey. I'm always trying to unpack in a personal way how there's all these kind of intentions at play in my everyday life and how when you look at people's everyday life, when you look at the mundane, it's a very dynamic space. And how do you feel like that experience of being like a bus rider or getting around LA in this way sort of changes like your experience of it? Just taking the Broadway bus as often as I did to get to Union Station and just seeing like the same exterior of the same blocks just slow, like slowly change or disappear or not at all yeah. um, became fascinating and like obsessive to me. More than ever thinking about what's right or what's wrong, I'm interested in how people live under certain conditions. Given those conditions, now what? You know, what are you supposed to do with that? And do you feel All like this. that stuff worked, it's made its way into your work? Yeah, 100%. And then I started like remixing, you know, all these records of just like the block into my own like ideal city blocks mm -hmm. of uh, LA, and, like making these maps and blueprints for proposals of spaces that I wanted to build. Right now we're on our way to go visit Donald Shoup at UCLA. I'm interested to see the relationship between like a car culture or encouraging car use. LA has, by some measures, the worst traffic congestion in the world, so we spend a lot of time in our cars moving slowly. It's air-conditioned, and your leather seats are as soft as a caramel mousse, and you get exactly the music you want. It seems like a good life, but it's at the expense of a lot of other things we could have. Do you think the culture of moving through Los Angeles sort of encourages you to drive? I think so, but I think that culture is a culture of free parking. All this free parking wasn't foisted at all onto us by some conspiracy of General Motors and Ford. It's what we all want. Everybody wants to park free, but we've elevated that desire to park free into a public policy. About 200 square miles of land are used for parking in Los Angeles County. That's insane. And almost all of it is free to the user, but you pay for it in every other aspect of your life. Even if you get free parking at work, 
It doesn't mean that the, the free parking comes out of thin air. It comes out of your wages. Part of why I was interested in talking to you is because I had these kind of suspicions or inklings of some of these things just in the way that I navigate the city. And when I talk about my experience, a lot of times people are like, they've never, uh, they only they only drive, basically. Well, that's right. I think two thirds of Angelinos say they rarely or never ride public transport. How do you feel like it's changing and what will be sort of this future of this in LA? People who drive their cars should pay for it. And the people who don't drive their cars shouldn't suffer the way they do now. We have marginalized people who don't own a car. A lot of people have never ridden any public transit here. And so they have this image that no one's on it. But to me, when they say that, they're kind of erasing all these people because there's tons of people who are riding the buses every day. The difficulty basically of getting from one place to another is going to be hardest on the poorest people here. When you're looking at income levels, you're going to have predominantly non-white people. So that's going to be your primary bus rider. And yeah, and it creates an increased wealth disparity that can be pretty striking. The way that people get around in the city, the way the city is designed, the way that you connect the geography from one neighborhood to another is all related to these kind of segregation patterns. And so two people here can have very different experiences of the city, and those experiences are happening concurrently, and yet they are in isolation to each other in many ways. Oftentimes I'm looking at the lives of people of color and how there have been creative practices despite violence, um, discrimination, um, and a systematic destruction of wealth. So given those extreme conditions that you live in, what do you do? I'm here at the Vincent Price Museum outside of Guadalupe Rosales' exhibition, Echoes of a Collective Memory, that's looking at East LA party culture. What's a key element of living in Los Angeles is that there are distinct communities that uh, exist concurrently. So there is no center. There is no place that is where you should be. As a result, people stay in their zone. Most of the time when people think about the driving culture of LA, they see it as a negative thing. And while there's a lot of problems to it, this culture and these kinds of practices could only uh, arise from this unique situation. 